So guys, we're gonna learn how to paint a parrot uh, using this reference image right here. And so for watercolor painting, we would need to draw with the pencil first. So first I'm using my pencil to kind of like draw the outline of the parrot. And we have the head area right there. And I'm just gonna draw this beak uh, right here, right? So using that pencil, I'm just gonna make the rounded shape of the beak and making sure that the bottom part right there is sharp. So after that, I'm just going to come all the way up and after that, I'm just going to draw the other part of the beak, the lower part of the beak. And after that, I'm just going to use my pencil to draw that white area that makes up the face where the eye is. So the eye is right there at the top and just use a small little circle to kind of like represent the eye, right? So just make sure that all the pencil marks are actually uh, making up uh, very uh, accurately uh, the uh, this this uh, reference image that you see right here and as, as accurately as possible just try to draw in all the main lines so we have these two lines that make up the body one on the left and one on the right and then we have this line curved line which uh, makes up the wings and then right now we are moving on to the claws so these claws are actually holding on to this tree branch just use a line to kind of like quickly uh, draw the line for the tree branch and a few strokes for the um, claw right there so uh, the main thing is uh, when we use the pencil to kind of like draw um, make this sketch of uh, before we actually apply the paint we want to just use very quick strokes to actually uh, make sure that all the main lines are actually in so we don't have to be too detailed when we actually do uh, these pencil marks so after that, I'm just going to use my brush to start painting right so right there at the top we have this red so we have cadmium red that a uh, very bright red uh, that you see right there and then when it's still wet when the paint is still wet i'm just gonna take my brush and um, dip some of the water so that my brush is wet and i'm just gonna add some orange okay right there at the bottom that you can you can actually see right there so we have all these uh, we have red we have orange and the thing is um we we need to have all these different colors so that uh, you see that the colors become rich because when we have red we have orange we have lighter red uh, when we have darker reds so all this will actually give rise to um, more interesting colors and more vibrant colors as well so you can see right there the area um, that is near to the beak um, is actually pretty dark so I actually added some dark paint inside so I actually prepared some black paint and I'm um, just adding in from the container and then I just combine that black area of uh, using that dark red and also just using my brush to kind of like combine the red area with the dark area so right there in the body we see some of the dark strokes right in front so that is because of the um, kind of shadows that are formed by the feathers so that's therefore I just added uh, some of the dark strokes that actually show uh, the dark areas of the body I'm just using some dark paint to kind of like combine with the reds to show that there are all these dark um, areas darker reds so we have lighter reds and we have darker reds and that makes the um, colors of the feathers more interesting right with all these um, darker reds that is now being combined with the lighter reds so the best way to combine watercolors is to make sure that they are still wet so we need to work um, pretty quickly but don't worry if the colors dry up you can still wet it again so uh, there's no issue if it's already dry so you can just add another layer of paint on top so right now I'm just combining the lighter reds with the darker reds that I just made and um, just using my brush I'm just combining all these different parts so the thing is um, when we have all these different colors uh, we can make sure that the paint concentration is higher so that uh, there is more paint and lesser water and uh, when this happens we can see that there is this kind of feathery furry kind of texture that makes up the parrot right with uh, this darker reds right now i'm just using some of the strokes to describe this area around the wings so um, right there beside the wing we have this black area and so this dark area is actually done by this very quick strokes so again adding darker kind of paints um, on the uh, stomach area the tummy area of the parrot so this area again is underneath the uh, the other wing so we have this darker area and just using a uh, very quick strokes so the thing about watercolor is uh, is good to actually uh, be have all these quick strokes that kind of like describe the thing that you're actually painting and uh, sometimes we don't have to be too detailed with 
the watercolor paint but if you want to be detailed that is possible as well but for this demonstration just using quick strokes to kind of demonstrate how we can do the feather textures of this parrot and by combining different colors right so of course again we have um, all these different kinds of reds that are now being combined with the darks so right now we have um, all these soft edges because um, they're combined when they're still wet so again using very quick strokes to kind of like show that all these feathers are actually coming together all right so using uh, most of the red so right now we see that the top of the parrot is actually made up of mostly red right so again combining all these colors when they're still wet they're adding more red paint this cadmium red paint so this cadmium red paint is considered a bright red kind of color and um, we have the darker red which is called a quinacridon red or it's called a alizoron crimson uh, colors are pretty close so um, on my palette you see on the extreme right that is the darker red right so again we are going to add some of the orange red right there at the top of the wing where you can actually see that the reds right there at the top is actually um, lighter as compared to the the other reds right so we have um this orange that is being added so of course in a reference picture there's not much orange but i'm just trying to invent some of the colors so that we see some color changes within the wing itself and then right there below we have this greens that are being added so if you look at the wing from the reference image we see that there is yellows there is red and there is also green right so this green is going to be added below the yellows so we have this um, yellows that are being added and this green is being added um, below that yellow and it's a uh, kind of a darker green so um, we can kind of like change the tone the tone of the green as well so that um, we can have lighter greens and also darker greens right so again we're gonna use this blue so right below that green we will use light blue which is cerulean blue right so this cerulean blue is actually sky blue and we have uh, a darker blue as well so that's called um ultramarine blue uh, which is the one on the left hand side of my palette so this um cerulean blue most of the blues here are cerulean blue on um, the sky blue i'm just using very quick strokes to kind of like combine um these strokes together so now we have some dark tones we have some um, darker kinds of uh, blues that are added because i just added some black to the blues so we have some dark strokes right there all right so i'm just using some of these strokes to kind of like show the feather the movement of the feathers on this wing <coughs> right here and so we have um, all these different kinds of strokes that actually describe and show uh, these different kinds of feathers that are on the wing all right so right now we are actually moving to i'm um, just touching up some of the wings uh the feathers on the wings right here and we're just going to wash the brush so the water is there for you to wash the brush so the thing is uh when we want to lighten a color just add more water and we, if we want to darken a color just add a darker version just add more paint darker paint right so now i just added a, a stroke for that a wing on the on the left hand side okay of us left of us so we have this uh blue that is on the left hand side so again using just a few strokes to to paint uh, the claws and now just using uh, more strokes to actually touch up this um wing where we have um these strokes dark strokes that are being added to show more feathers uh to describe more of the textures of the wing itself All right so we have um this parrot that is almost done except the face area which we will very soon cover and i'm just using the brush right now to kind of use this light gray tone to paint the face here so the reason why i actually paint the face first is because i want it to dry quickly so i plan out uh, my my painting process with um, the face that is being painted first so while painting the beak right now the face actually takes time to dry so that once it's dry i can paint the eyes directly all right so that's how you can uh, plan out the way that you paint so right now i'm just using some of the browns to actually uh, paint the big area with a dark color a black color right at the tip uh, there where actually make it look sharp with a flick of the brush 
So now I'm actually painting the lower part of the beak. So you can see that it's rounded. It's pretty rounded for the lower part of the beak. And just gonna use this brush to kind of like, you know, make this rounded part of the beak. And right below that rounded part of the beak, we have this black. Okay, this black color. And this black color combined with the red will give you a shadowy kind of a, a impression just underneath the beak. So right now we are actually moving towards the painting of the tree branch. This tree branch where this parrot is actually holding on to. So we have this light brown and this light brown is uh, being painted okay, on top of the black that we just did. So we're going to use a very wet kind of uh, texture, a very wet kind of uh, brush strokes but it can also be combined with a few dry brush strokes, dry brush techniques and we're just gonna use all these different kinds of brush strokes to create all these different kinds of textures, right? So from the wing, we kind of like have all these dark strokes that are coming out. So the dark strokes can be pretty dry because uh, there's more paint right there. So these dry brush strokes can be combined with the wet uh, strokes that we just did on the left hand side. So now we are combining the dry, uh, darker brush strokes with the wet uh, brush strokes that we just made on the left hand side. Uh, so it combines uh, pretty well in the middle right there. So we have this light brown and this um, burnt sienna that I'm using, which is the light brown, is actually combining pretty well just using very quick strokes. So this quick strokes is actually used to show the texture on the a tree branch where you have all these wood textures that is being depicted right now with all these lines. So all these lines actually add more roughness to the textures and that's another way that we can use watercolor brush strokes to actually depict all these dry and smooth kind of textures. So again we can't really see the claws right now but it's okay because we are just using some of these strokes to summarize what we see and to be represented on the painting itself. So just using very quick strokes to kind of like you know um, represent all these feathers and also all these different kinds of textures that we see right so very soon we are moving towards the end of paintings right now we can use the brush to kind of like paint the eyes because now the face here is almost fully dry i'm just going to very quickly paint the eyes with just a small a dark area and just make sure that it is pretty small okay so just touching up on this area below the face there are some patterns there are some textures so just use some um, gray tones to kind of like show the textures and we are almost done with this painting so very quickly i'm just using some of the quick strokes to paint the outline to add more feathers on top and to actually make sure that we have all these different strokes that are being added all right so that actually uh, will form more feathers and um, this will give rise to a complete parrot painting. Alright, so what have we learned from this demonstration? So the thing is, uh, we need to have different reds, different colors to make up the, the body of the, the parrot um, using all these different colors to represent the feathers and also we would need to combine all these colors when it's still wet and using strokes to describe the shadows, the feathers and also um, different dry and wet techniques to describe the tree branch and also of course using the brush to help us control so that we can paint the beak area and also the eye area and the face area. So that's the end of this demonstration. Hey everyone, thank you for watching my video and I hope you have gained valuable insights from my tutorial. If you enjoyed my video, hit the like button, comment down below and share my video. Do consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post my next video. Do check out the links below for more information for my art and I hope to see you in the next one.